All right, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mario, for being here. I never thought I would be talking about yarn and bobbins at an OpenStack event. So this is the first. Who knew? Who knew? Tell me a little bit about, for those who weren't, was everybody in the keynote here? Everybody was in the keynote? No? Okay. For quite a few weren't. So why don't you give us a quick rundown of what, what EarlyCon does? Because yeah. most people don't, yeah. might not yeah. know what it is. So EarlyCon is a textile machine manufacturer. Uh, we basically deliver big plants to our customers where they produce, in the end, produce yarn. So yarn is the uh, product where every textile uh, fabric that you use in your daily life, like those chairs, carpets, and everything else, um, is made from. And we do this on a um, bigger scale. So half of the world's yarn production is running on uh, machines that customers bought at uh, early Conmeme Fiber. Put that into context, how much is half of the world's yarn production? Yes, the world's yarn production is 70 million um, tons per year and 35 millions are produced on the machines bought from us. And they're bought from you. You are not making the yarn yourself, just no, to clarify not that. No, not We only do the, uh, build the machinery, the factory. We do all the, uh, all the things to enable our customers to do those things, yes. Now, if I think about that industry, just uh, to add some more context there, is, is that a very forward-thinking industry? Is, is, are we talking about you know, people who really want to be at the cutting edge? In terms of engineering, we were always at the cutting edge because these yarn things have very high requirements for quality and everything. So the engineering in itself of the machines always was uh, top notch. You, you were going to say that. There was nothing else you could no, say. Uh, about of course. <laughs> and now we're also starting to dig deeper into the IT topics, uh, also delivering world class IT solutions now. All right. So, what, what was that like? If you think back 20 years, I know you haven't been with a company that no. long, but, but what was that tech stack like maybe even 10 years ago? <clears throat> like single workstations in a bigger factory, lots of workstations. Over time, then there were some, uh, came in some server systems like that. Everything yeah, was not integrated, let's say it like that, yes. And what, what were you using at the time? Was it Windows based? Or? Uh, you are Windows based, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what has changed? Requirements changed, to okay. be honest. Yeah. Big time. I mean, Industry 4.0, digitization, big topics. Especially in, in China, also big topic. Um, Chinese government is very heavy investing in uh, digitization topics. And so our customers are also pushing to get new solutions. And at the end of the day, it's all about driving uh, up the efficiency, operational excellence in those factories. So, yeah, they only would benefit on a commercial basis uh, from it, but also on a new product basis and uh, from the environmental perspective. Uh, these are the big drivers. You mentioned China. Asia is one of your biggest markets, right? Yeah. So, so uh, China is 40% of our revenue, um, yearly revenue, and then Greater Asia, India. And for carpet systems, it's mainly uh, Northern America, U.S., and just to add some context to that, what do those factories look like? I don't think most yeah. people here have been in a yarn factory, unless you have, which okay, I see good some for you. People, some I see. <laughs> they work with you. Yeah, of course. Uh, so the bigger installations are like 24 football fields in size, and producing daily producing something like 900 tons of yarn, which equals a let's say a train of four kilometers in length. Keep it like that. Not bad, not yeah. bad. Um, why op what does OpenStack have to do with all of that? I wonder, yes, why? <laughs> OpenStack. And so now we have these requ new, re new requirements. We have to do uh, deeper integration into customer systems, integrate our systems better, better with itself, um, more requirements on high availability and all such topics. And then you wonder how can you um, yeah, fulfill those requirements. And then you begin to think what you can do. And this is where we basically started. What are those requirements? Yeah. Um, requirements, currently our customers rely on uh, multiple systems. And um, 
Of course, every, everywhere where you have a different system for a different task, you have interfaces, everything has to work properly. And if you have a more integrated solution, then you have a lower friction overall and better process integration. And from this standpoint, uh, our customers want us to, uh, yeah, to get onboard workloads that currently are, for example, are done by SAP systems or such things uh, um, to drive down costs again. Um, and so we have to find a solution to drive uh, availability and other things are uh, um, to drive the operational excellence, for example, are machine, based, uh, machine learning based workloads uh, and no process integration overall, which is mainly the biggest topic overall. Mm -hmm. You mentioned availability, which yeah. I assume is a big thing for your yes. customers. What, what does it mean when one of those machines goes down for one of them? First thing, they produce waste and lose money. <laughs> because you, if you think of a big installation, you can't stop this factory producing. Even if one machine in this factory where thousands of machines are standing is going down, then uh, raw material is still processed, and, but it's a uh, waste at the end of the day. And this is um, yeah, the uh, most important thing, to not produce waste. Now, you mentioned you were a Windows shop, a Microsoft shop. Um, they've got a solution there that yeah, you could have course. used yes. with um, Azure Stack and Azure. Yes. First of all, nothing wrong using Microsoft from my perspective. So we are open. We, we use basically what we brings us the most benefit there. Um, we of course, evaluated Azure Stack. Uh, it was a natural choice to look at it. But uh, from a cost perspective, economic perspective, it wasn't feasible to use it. Okay. Um, so we skipped that. Was that because of the hardware or software? Yeah, it's a twofold problem, I think, that they have. The first problem is that they have very, very high standards in terms of specialized or dedicated hardware that you have to use. And the whole setup is not as flexible as you have with this OpenStack uh, uh, setup that you can realize. Um, and the second part is that you always have this running license cost, usage cost, yeah. So in the end, you decided on OpenStack. How did you get to that point? Did you evaluate anything else as well? What else? It, well, that's the question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for, our basic idea was we need a little data center in the factory. Mm -hmm. So and then we said, OK, maybe a little cloud. And then Azure Stack was out of the game. And uh, the next thing that we then found out about was OpenStack. It was totally unknown to us. Just through research, we uh, found out about it. And then uh, dig deeper into all those uh, possibilities that were there. At the end of the day, we had a, you know, some questions that we had to clear. Um, what, what were those questions? Oh, what was, uh, it's a long time ago. It was in January. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just remembering. Well, you you yeah, only I found out about OpenStack, yeah. what, a year ago? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. We actually, actually started all of this uh, end of January. So uh, in last in last year, around this time, we, I was investigating, and um, just simple things like what, what can we do with a virtual machine on on this thing, and then how is all the how, how all those network t uh, topics are working and everything. So this was the basic: uh, how can we size it? The, the biggest question we had, because we uh, okay normally we have quite big factories, but there are some cases where we have only one machine. So we need something that scales from very, very little to very big. Yeah? And from an operational perspective, of course, it's always better you have the same system basis. So you can use all, all the same system um, regardless of the size. Yes. So given that you didn't know much about OpenStack, how did you get started? In getting answered the questions or doing the research with the questions? So, oh, research, I assume Google helped you, but... YouTube it, Academy, <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> but, but in terms of actually getting started and doing a, maybe a prototype project yeah. or something like that? The funny thing was, I, during YouTube Academy studies, I found a talk from uh, a... A talk was called Operating a OpenStack Cloud with a, a very small team. I said, this uh, looks good to me watch the talk, and uh, when the guys begin to talk, I immediately recognized, great, they are from Germany. And then uh, I just wrote an email to them and said, okay, I know it's not your core business, you are a public cloud provider, but maybe you can answer some questions we have. So who was that public cloud, was it AWS? 
No, it's scale up. <laughs> so our partner, we announced at the keynote, scale up, and Christoph is here, CEO of scale up, and uh, yeah, they were friendly enough and said, yeah, okay, we are willing to uh, answer your questions, come to Berlin, and then let's have a talk. And so I said, you basically okay. used him as a consultant? Yeah, huh. basically, like this. And then I said, okay, well, when can we come? And I asked in, in December, and then we made an appointment for January. And I said, what's the cost of all of this? And he said, you know, nothing, just come. I said, no, we don't understand this business. We need, we need to pay for this workshop. <laughs> so I forced him to write an official offer. Yeah. yeah Is he getting started. checks now? He seems happy there. So. <laughs> Some, yeah. <Hi. laughs> So, um, so you didn't do it yourself. Did you try to stand up an OpenStack cloud at all? I looked into it. I know I, I discovered this DevStack thing and everything, but I thought, okay, uh, it shouldn't be only for me. It should be directly on a bigger scale. We have to um, investigate it on a bigger scale with a bigger test system. So don't start with it on your own. It's not only OpenStack that's new, Linux also for us new. Okay. You know? So everything new. And then we said, okay, let's really talk to the people who know what they're talking about. You, did you consider any other vendors? Because we've got, you know, for SUSE and Red Hat and Canonical and everybody else as well. Problem is lots of those vendors are not so prominent in Germany. Okay. I know SUSE is, yeah. But from a Discoverability standpoint, at this time, it was not so easy to find a company where you say, okay, I trust them in delivering the right answers to us without going and flying out or something. Yeah. All right, so you're working with ScaleUp. You've got, got a prototype running. How do you put that into production? Putting the prototype into production. What was, that, what was that journey like? And I mean, better to begin at the start. I mean, we then after the, uh, having the workshop, we agreed on building some blueprints. So uh, putting our requirements into some architectural paper. Um, and from this blueprints, then we said, okay, let's build for each of those blueprints um, a reference system, a test system for our internal uh, guys and for us to, uh, to discover the, uh, this thing. And uh, from there we you know, exactly did that and used this as a basis to jumpstart our first customer project. Yeah. So um, it was basically like planned, putting, looking at the customer, sizing, taking the right blueprint, setting the system up, having lots of troubles in the meantime because you learn a lot Things can go wrong and they always will go wrong, so we expected this, but uh, was no fun, things going wrong. <laughs> what, what went wrong? Everything. <laughs> so, everything. It I doesn't mean, count just, as an answer. Just those simple things. I mean, you order three servers from Dell, they arrive and no RAID controllers in there. So there's one week of your timeline gone, uh, where normally the OpenStack installation should be set up, customs, Next thing, then everything you tested, spinning up in the factory, you tested everything. Again, those RAID controllers didn't work. Dell knew about it. So another day gone, so you have to fix something. Some random Cisco images where switches lose their port channels. Nobody knows why, but we are investigating. So all those funny things where thousands of years of IT knowledge sit around the table and all of them say, never seen that before. None of those sound like OpenStack problems. Did OpenStack didn't give you any, any problems? Mostly not OpenStack problems. That's something that we have to investigate around Ceph, whether we, are, we currently see some uh, locks, because it, at one time it was in a read-only state on this node. But the guys are optimistic to fix it. But this was a, yeah, it was a uh, thing caused by the switch failing. So yeah, we will see how this... Uh, will pan out. The other thing is, on the other hand, we're not OpenStack issues, not software-related issues. Yeah. So you, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that you went from not knowing anything about OpenStack to putting it into production in 
how many months? Nine months? Ten months? Eight months. Eight months. Eight months. That's that's. that's <laughs> That, I, I wouldn't have heard that three years ago or four years ago when I went to my first OpenStack summits, I think. Um, is that due to scale up or is that due to the, the nature of OpenStack today or what, what allowed it's you a to mix. do that? Of course, not only OpenStack, not only scale up, not only, it's a mix of all the guys involved. Yeah. It's, it's an effort, joint effort. And if not all the guys play together, then you can't do it, but fortunately we could. What did your customers say when you said, oh, we, we've never tried this, but, you know, it's just a few miles of yarn. Why don't we put in some OpenStack? <laughs> so our Sentry, the, the CEO of Sentry, I mean, I mean, this is the reference customer from the video that you saw. And, and just, they make yarn for, yes. you know, Nike and, and you know, footwear and yes. the pretty high-end customers. Big sports so. brands, high-quality product he does. Uh, it, we just played uh, with an open open cards. We said, okay, this is brand new, but this is our plan. Um, this is what you get out of it on many levels. I mean, for us, OpenStack is only the infrastructure, so to say it enables us to, to do all those nice things like cont uh, continuous deployment and so on, where we want to uh, um, go through, go to, but... Um, uh, especially directly on the infrastructure basis, you see how some benefits that you can realize, like high availability for a legacy system and something like that. He saw that we played with open cards, and then he said, okay, where are the risks? Um, and then we, he made plans together with our process experts. What happens if something goes wrong? How many money do I, uh, do I lose? And then said, we are in one vote now, guys. So, uh, so he expects that something can go wrong. But he is uh, fully on board, and uh, yeah, even from his side, he gives his best to support us. So what does, what does your current setup look like? You've got this first res reference customer. What, what does their system look like today that's up and running? So, uh, they have the, our, um, it's our middle blueprint. It's a three-node system that we can scale if we need more compute. Um, it's a hyper-converged installation that we are doing, so OpenStack is running, uh, Control Plane is running on all three nodes, and it's running in Docker containers on there. Ceph is a file storage, I mean, this is uh, often the case. KVM has a hypervisor, and then on top of, of this, we are doing all those things. For us, uh, the good thing is that we have a complete remote uh, monitoring and things like this via our VPN connection. So he's always connected with our central systems. And this was uh, very helpful uh, during all those catastrophes happening. Um, and what, 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 what does that system actually do? So you're pulling in sensor data, are you controlling the machine? What, what does that OpenStack system yeah. do? So uh, the uh, software we deploy on the system actually is called the Plant Operation Center and is doing all those uh, things ar around the production that you have to do, and all the reporting statistics. You have shift changes, all of those things. It's integrating with the customer's ERP system. Um, it's doing the labeling of the uh, ready-made bobbins. So if every few uh, minutes you have some bobbins coming out of the factory, so to say, it's not on there what the product is that he produced on this bobbin, and so you have to label it. It's, it's a simple, sounds like a simple process, but if this thing fails, then uh, you have again waste, because after a few minutes, nobody knows what's on all of those bobbins. That, that does sound like a simple problem, but that's... Sounds simple, but it's right. a big benefit if you have this. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. What about all those those IoT use cases and, and sensors and the machines? What, are you doing anything with that? Are you pulling in all of that data and using it? Or? Directly from the, currently, in this installation, directly from the machines into this PUC system, not. Not directly, so to say. But we get uh, data in from our so-called guide systems. The guide systems are the workstations that sit at, directly at the machine and control the machine, what the machine is doing, and where you can somewhat reconfigure the machine, for example. <clears throat> and from there, we get directly get data. So there's an event every time a bobbin is, for example, uh, ready-made. Then event and data is 
pushed into these POC system and from there on other actions are called. Mm -hmm. Now, when I asked you about did you consider other options besides Azure Stack and Open Data, it's always the public cloud too and mm -hmm. their systems. Is that something you considered? Is that something your customers considered? <laughs> Cloud was a very bad word for our customers because they are afraid to lose uh, yeah, some of their business knowledge in leaking data into the public. And this is the most important thing for, for them. They need a solution they can trust. And the best solution they can trust is a solution that runs in their four walls. They were scared of the cloud. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, is, that, is that industry wide or is it just century? I mean, we represent half of the industry, and uh, <laughs> almost all of them were scary of the, of the word cloud and public cloud. So it's, I think it's rep representative, yeah, yeah, of course. Interesting. So uh, you've got a connection over a VPN now that gives you control as you need, but there's, as there's no public cloud involved at all. In. No. So we don't need to talk about multi-cloud or anything like that, or hybrid, it's not an issue. If our public cloud, our central systems, and the edge cloud, it's some kind of the same construct, but uh, no, nothing like ABL, ABL, AWS or Azure, something like that, no. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's coming up for you then. Um, you've done this, this pro you've gone through this process, it went fast, you had lots of issues. What would you have done diff well, let's go back one step. What would, you, what would you have done different now that you've gone through this? What would you have learned and what maybe can other people learn that are on the same journey? Done differently? Nothing. Don't work with scale up or something like of that? Of course not. <laughs> no, nah, no, you can work with them. Um, no, done, uh, sure, done differently, um, not much. Uh, some little things. Um, because if you don't make these uh, failures or get these uh, problems, you don't learn from it. So. Uh, for us, it was good. I mean, it was really a stressful time. Um, and we don't plan to uh, go down with the speed. We don't pedal on the metal, so to say. So you've standardized an open stack? That's what it's going to be going forward? Well, going forward, we have some big tasks that we still have to do, to be honest. Um, as I said, in OpenStack is a good infrastructure choice for us, and we have, have to, um, we have it now in place, more or less now in place. We, we have to scale this infrastructure up so that we can deliver more and more dozens of installations per year. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is that we really have to uh, bring our new um, common service platform to life on this system. This is the next big step. So it's a complete uh, new software development effort that we drive with lots of services, with all our machine learning uh, uh, algorithms on there. I mean, we had a little example in the keynote already, and we have uh, much more to come um, in terms of machine learning process integration, new services. And the next uh, thing that we will bring to Sentry is exactly something like this. It's a new service that will uh, help him to visualize things, like the, the so dashboard, like dashboard. Thing, like the dashboard thing from the factory, um, really bringing this uh, all over the place in, in his factory, and uh, uh, even bringing some software development methodologies like the Agile stand-up into a factory. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So. So the yarn industry is getting agile, is it? I hope so. Interesting. Driving that's, quality. That, but I mean. but so what I'm getting at is that that's, that culture change that comes with that must be very, it must be hard for you, must be hard for the, the industry you're working with. I'm, yeah, it's hard for us, of course. We have to learn all of those things, but when we see it's, a, it's something good that we've learned, we directly pass it on to our customers. Uh, on the other hand, of course, Sentry is a very thankful partner for this because he un really understands things like mean time to recovery and uh, all of those things. Yeah. Um, from this point of view, it's great. But we also have seen when we have shown what we are doing currently with Sentry and what we are planning in the future uh, from other customers who were more hesitant in the, in the past that they uh, are also excited to get their fingers on that solution. So, just looks good. What's the advantage for your, your customer? 
sales, wealthy sales guy. So, <laughs> for our customers, of course, for our customers, we will drive their operational excellence in a big way. Because, I mean, today you are very reliant on people, individual knowledge, and in the future you can put this into a structure process. This sounds to to totally boring, I know. <laughs> But in the real world, in the business world, those things drive your efficiency, and this is what we are doing. And okay, there are those machine learning things that also will come and will automate some, some, some things, and so they will also benefit, benefit from those things. It's driving all those KPIs in the right direction. This is what our customers can expect uh, with the reliability that they know. Got it. Um, it's gonna, oh, it's I'm going to open it up for questions maybe for a moment. I've got a few more for you, but maybe let's see if there's anybody in the audience who's got some questions since we've got about 15 minutes left. If you want to dig a little bit deeper. Robert, you want to? Hi, thank you. This is great. Um, these I actually have several really short questions with really short answers, if you'll indulge me. Um, so. I want to make sure that I understand this. You went from not knowing what OpenStack is to being in production on a hyper-converged architecture that you built in nine months. Were you here? <laughs> just, just, yes. That's unreal. Okay. Um, and you're using Docker Swarm to manage your uh, container clusters? No Docker Swarm, no. But you're using, you're using Docker as, as in, so what are you managing your clusters with? Is it Kubernetes or? Underneath is where OpenStack is running right. in, Kubernetes. Okay, all right. Um, and you, kind of, you acted as your own integrator on this project, right? You didn't hire somebody to put the pieces together for you and do the engineering. You did this yourself. No, no. Uh, this is the misunderstanding. We partnered with ScaleUp. Okay, I, I just, okay. It sounded, your, your description sounded like it was more of a casual... Uh, they just kind of helped you out. But. It went from casual to okay. <laughs> but it's still more casual. <laughs> and the final piece is how large is your, uh, your operations team inside that runs this infrastructure for your customers? Currently we are using our, the same guys that run our data centers internally. So no net new hires? No net new hires until now. Oh, thank you. Robert took away half of my follow-up questions there. That's a, that's <laughs> um, well, Sean Michael is walking up. Tell us, uh, since well, well. you were I, a Windows... I've got one question for you. Uh, just because I'm going to cut you off on your own question. Uh, I know you talked a little bit about challenges, which is great. If you could just give us a little bit of color on uh, how you evaluated security, because I know you mentioned your customers were worried about the public cloud, but did, was there any evaluation from uh, your company to, to look and see the security and any security or, or risk-related challenges? And then... Uh, as a logical follow-up to that, what, were, are, what have been some of the GDPR-related requirements that you've had to deal with? Thank you. Yeah. GDPR-related requirements is, is um, we have some key principles. The first principle is we do as a lot as we can at the edge, so in the, directly in the customer factory. Um, if we have to transmit data to our central data centers, then we do anonymize data as much as we can. Second thing is having an open book for the customer. So we always know what we transmit, um, how often we transmit, and how much. And in our central data platform, which is basically Hadoop's um, system, um, we have uh, sys uh, systems in place where we at any point in time can say where is customer or personal information stored in the system, in which columns, in which rows, can filter them, can anonymize if we like to, and can delete, of course. So this is the G answer to the GDPR question and security itself. Uh, we, of course, had our internal guys who are specialized in all of those things, especially the head of our uh, data center and network team ran our internal GDPR uh, efforts for the, our internal systems uh, over a year, I think it was. Um, so he's experienced in those things, and of course, experienced in all the security stuff with his uh, with his t uh, team members, and um, so they have their hands in there. 
And what we are currently doing is, um, before we now scale this thing up and deliver dozens of systems each year, is doing a full security audit and try to get the uh, ISO cybersecurity certificate for our system. Is it enough? Okay. Other questions? Nope. Um, are there any special requirements because you're operating in China? Yeah, local Chinese data, uh, data protection uh, um, regulations, regulations are in place. So we of course, have to also uh, conform to these. And um, for this reason, we will not only have a central system running in Europe, where our headquarters are here in, Ger in, in Germany, we also will have a copy, cloud copy, uh, for our, especially for our Chinese customer within China. Um, we are happy to have a production facility in China also, to have already some data center server capacity there. And this we will expand to have a copy of our central cloud system uh, ready for our Chinese customer. You said cloud there, that's a, that's a dirty word. So. <laughs> Maybe we clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, since you were talking about being a window shop, and you, you probably have a lot of legacy applications as well that you are running that maybe still need to run in those factories today as well. How are you handling those with this new OpenStack deployment? So the uh, plant operation center is one of the biggest uh, legacy systems we have. Um, even if it's still under the uh, act active development, we call now call it legacy system because over time the phase of the software will change. Uh, on the other side, we have all those uh, guide systems that directly control the machine itself. So um, it's also running currently on Windows. But we are, uh, also have development efforts there in place uh, for some time, quite some time now. And they are thinking in those teams about migrating to a, a Linux-based base um, and replacing some of the old things now. And at the end of the day, we also plan to uh, onboard those systems on the OpenStack infrastructure. Is this mix of Windows and Linux giving you trouble and running Windows VMs? Is that a problem for you? Just running the VM is not, not a big problem, but I, I would hope there was much more support for those enterprise guys who come from the Microsoft Enterprise who are, now we have our li internal license server. Each time you spin up a Windows virtual machine, you somehow, somehow have to get the license in there. Everything should be nice, like you know it from your enterprise data centers. And um, I guess there is some room for improvement and uh, we will see how we maybe can contribute there. Um, yeah, let's see. So. Let me just follow up one second before yeah. your question. Uh, contributing, contributing to OpenStack, you kind of hinted at that there. Is that, you, you don't have a huge team, but is that something you're thinking about? Yes, thinking about. I mean, currently it's too early to say, yeah, we will do something in, the, in this community to, um, but at the end of the day, I said to our CFO uh, once in a presentation, I look at it like this. Um, normally you buy f for millions of euros licenses from SAP and Microsoft. Now you get this stuff for free, some consulting, okay. But uh, at the end of the day, license cost is almost nothing. And uh, what about hiring two guys anywhere in the world, sitting there contributing for us in the community, representing us? Oh, that's awesome. It's much cheaper. And then he said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's that's yeah. easy. <laughs> that's awesome. That's kind of how it should be an open source. <laughs> um, actually, I have a, a question that relates to that. I was curious, being new to OpenStack relatively, um, as you brought your team here this week, what you were most interested in learning at this point in your process, and also if there is anything that you've heard so far that particularly piques your interest. And for, I had no time until today <coughs> to attend any session, <coughs> only our keynote. Um, interest peaked up front by the Starling X project, of course. We have an eye on it naturally, and we will attend some sessions on it, and we will see if this is something 
all the other guys, I haven't spoken to them in depth, so. <coughs> More water. Let's see, other questions? Anybody? Three, two, one. No, no questions. Um, I got more. <laughs> you all right? I have more water, but you'll get a cold if you. Robert, do you? Thank you. Um, you mentioned the consulting fees. I would, they're probably high enough that I would cough too if I had to look at those. But um, are you thinking about moving away from that? Are you thinking about moving the operations, everything in-house? Don't, he's not listening and it doesn't hurt him, he's got money. Oh, no, just, oh, I was open cards. Uh, thinking about how you can operate with scale up, thinking about how, what we can do in-house, even if looking at other, maybe other possible partners and looking what they can do for us. I would actually want to add something to that. So, actually, it was our recommendation to, for EarlyCon to get open technology themselves because if you, I mean, if you put so much effort into changing everything you do to a different way, then you shouldn't rely. I mean, I mean, it's good for us, but you shouldn't rely on on a single vendor out there helping you. You have to have the knowledge yourself. So, I mean, and that's what they're trying to do. I mean. Too good to be true. Yeah. <laughs> well, while you're standing there, you might be able to answer this question as well. How hard is it to find OpenStack talent right now for you and, and also for, for you, Mario? Um, it, it is difficult. I mean, we're trying to... Essentially, I mean, uh, my company is uh, in business for 20 years and we taught everything ourselves. I mean, we learned, I don't know, from scratch. So. I mean, that's also what we did with OpenStack like six years ago when we started with OpenStack. Um, and finding new talent, well, I mean, it's always good to, uh, to connect with the community and there's always someone you know somewhere and uh, I mean, that's the best way to find someone. Not only with, uh, in terms of OpenStack, but generally um, what I see is that um, because we also hire developers, everything else. Um, you just have to get to talk to people. If, they, if you can talk to them, if we can show them what we are planning to do and what we are already doing, then mostly they are excited to get on board. But the pro problem is finding those people that you, that you really want to onboard. Yeah. And it's not only valid for OpenStack, it's for everything else. For sure. So you're hiring? Of course, so <laughs> if you want to have a chat, let's talk. Come to our booth, A28, in the Marketplace Hall. Uh, and we're not only hiring for our headquarters in Remscheid, we're hiring all over the world. So basically, you can live where you want and work for us. And we build up a new digital hub in Munich. So if Munich is your gig, then you also can live there and work for us. We will try to make it easy for you to come to EarlyCon, yes. All right, awesome. I think that's our time. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it, Mario. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.